Now, see here, friends. In this slide, there are four questions. The first question, we will read the first question. Okay, read. Dash is defined as a measure of the variance of domestic currency, value of an asset, liability or operating income that is attributable to unanticipated change in the exchange rate. Okay, you can see the question first. Okay, see what is being given. There are four options also given. The answer for this is foreign exchange rate the foreign exchange risk so why foreign exchange is because it's about domestic currency value of an asset liability operating income that is attributable to unanticipated which is not been anticipated or forecasted the change in exchange rate exchange rate itself means foreign exchange risk foreign exchange risk thus the answer will be foreign exchange risk but why this risk is because that the movement in the exchange rates between two currencies may adversely impact the status of status of it okay then the next question investment in post office time deposit is dash which risk investment in post office itself means zero risk okay itself means zero risk because it's a government say it's a which risk zero risk it's no risk so the answer is a zero risk why investments in as well as investments in in guaranteed by government of india that is government securities are considered as having zero risk from credit risk angle if you see from credit risk angle it it be it will be zero risk next comes 11% government of india that, that is 11% of goi government of india security is quoted at rupees 110 the yield that is the interest will be dash how much will be the interest okay see 110 11% is the rate of interest government of india security so it will be the the answer will be how much the answer the answer will be 10% it's defined here itself because it's been 110 110 11% 10, so see here yield that is b y yield is calculated as the income received from the investment yield how is been calculated income which is received from the investment divided investment from the investment divided by the price of the instrument okay what is the income what are the income received from the investment divided by the price of the instrument Thus, the security pays rupees eleven and cost rupees one ten. Therefore, the yield will be, you can say, the income received from the investment is eleven divided by the price of the instrument is one ten. In percent, if you if we say it, it will be ten percent. So answer will be B ten percent. The next one, next is the next question is C I C A A P means that is I C A A P. the full form is there are four options given what is icaap as a banker you may be aware of what is icaap see there are four options given the first option is internal capital assessment adequacy process second is internal capital adequacy assessment process third is international capital adequacy assessment process third then the fourth option is imaginary capital control assessment process now which is the answer here the answer is b because all banks are required to have an icaap in place all banks are required to have an internal capital adequacy assessment process all banks are required to have an internal capital adequacy assessment process in place okay now in our next slide there will be few questions regarding the risk management frequently asked which is been important which is important for your upcoming exam hello friends now in this class we will see risk management that is in this video we will see risk management frequently asked questions for ciib bankers those who are going to write the exam for the upcoming exam risk management paper it's a part 4 we have released okay you see here this is our 48th question just read the question any term deposit for value of dash crore and above is defined as bulk term deposit as per rbi guidelines now just to see here there are four options given you can see in the screen the answer is also been highlighted in red color 
you will see directly the answer just read the question by yourself first then go for the answer which we have been highlighted the d that is rupees 1 crore so why 1 crore is because why the answer is d any deposit of value rupees 1 crore or above is considered as a which deposit bulk deposit is considered as bulk deposit okay therefore any term deposit for value of 1 crore and above is defined as bulk term deposit as per rbi guidelines thus the answer is d rupees 1 crore moving back to the next question that is three mature payment of a term loan will result in interest rate risk of which type of dash that is embedded option risk why because see embedded option what is that embedded option brings uncertainty into the calculations it brings uncertainty it brings uncertainty into the calculations as the inflow and the outflow of funds inflow or outflow of the funds could be different depending upon whether the embedded option is exercised or not i will explain you this see, premature payment of a term okay premature payment of a term loan will result in interest rate risk of dash type it's a embedded option risk why because the word embedded option it brings uncertainty into the calculations which calculation funds calculation which funds calculation inflow or outflow of funds either of the one could be different depending upon whether the specific embedded option is exercised or not and the next question right to buy under under currency options is currency option okay right to buy buy means it's always call option if it's sell that means put option rest so right to buy buy means call buy means call okay so that's why the answer is call option the holder of a call option has the right but not the liability to buy please make it clear the holder of a call option has the right but not the liability to buy the underlying asset at the strike price at the exercise price okay the opposite of it right to sell is known as which option right to sell is known as put option why because the holder of a put option has the right but not the liability to sell because it's a sell to sell the underlying that is the sell the underlying asset at the strike price of the option strike price is nothing but the exercise price of the option in this slide there are four questions moving back to the next slide we are having more questions See now friends here, the 52 question, question number 52, expand ICC MCS. So what is ICC MCS? Okay, what is the full form? There are four options given. International Conference of Capital Measurement and Capital Standards. Second is International Co Convergence of Capital Measurement and Capital Standards. Third is the International Conference of Capital Measurement and Capital Stability. And the last option is Indian Convergence of Capital Measurement and Capital Standards. Now, what will be the answer here? ICC MCS. This is a main term. How? So, what is the full form of ICC MCS? It, the answer is B. International, International Convergence of Capital Measurement and Capital Standards. ICC MCS. International Convergence international convergence of capital measurement and capital standards so what is this this is a document which is released by the basel committee on banking supervision it's called bcbs basel committee on banking supervision and is the foundation of international approach for capital adequacy standards across the world okay that's why the see here icc mcs international convergence i see international convergence of what of capital measurement and capital standards so this is a document which is released by the basel committee on banking supervision bcbs and is the foundation of the international approach for capital adequacy standards across the world the next question of this slide is what does rcsa refer to what does rcsa refer to rcsa means what there are four options given it is 
based on risk so the answer is b risk and control self assessment rcsc risk and control self assessment is a standard tool for operational risk management this is very important question risk and control self assessment rcsc is a standard tool for operational risk management under this that is under rcsa is a, a, a product you can say a product or a process or an operational risk area is selected and studied to identify the inherent risk involved the control measures are been are been applied or has been applied that are in place to mitigate the risk so the effectiveness of these controls and the net resultant residual risk left to be faced by the whom by the bank okay i would repeat once again the answer for this is b risk and control self assessment that is rcsa it's a standard tool for operational risk management okay under this you can take anything any operational risk area or any product or a any process which is been studied and it's been identified why it's been identified to identify the inherent risk involved in that and accordingly a uh, control measures are been taken place that are in place to mitigate those risk so the effectiveness of these control risk that is the control measures and the net resultant residual risk net resultant residual risk left to be faced by the bank by the bank now look here friends this is our 54th question just read the question first failing to take appropriate measures to protect assets like for an example ipr intellectual property rights owned by the institution is covered under which risk is covered under it is the legal so that's why legal risk every institution should have a necessary copyright and other measures in place to legally defend its intellectual property rights ipr and hence it is classified as legal risk okay however friends listen carefully however failure in general to pro in general failure to protect the assets say failure to renew the insurance of a branch premises or you can say a cash in transit could fall under would fall under operational risk not under legal risk okay so what falls under legal risk is an institution should have its necessary copyright and other measures in place to legally defend its ipr and hence it's classified as legal risk however failure in general to protect the assets say the failure to renew the insurance of the branch premises or cash in transit could fall under operational risk and not under legal risk okay then what is classified as process management what is classified as process management even types of operational risk what is classified as process management even types of operational risk under basel 2 there are four options accounting errors fiduciary breaches vandalism product defects so the answer is the first accounting errors is because see basel 2 category of operational risk event basel 2 category okay this listen keep in mind basel 2 category of operational risk event types include execution it's uh, included execution delivery execution delivery and process management that is ed pm yes ed pm execution delivery execution delivery and process management so execution delivery and process management e stands for execution d is for d indicates delivery p in, p indicates the process m indicates the management thus ed pm execution delivery and process management then the transaction capture and execution is one of the sub types under this edpm thus the accounting errors fall under this sub category fiduciary breaches and product defects too are operational risk events but they fall under the main category claims understood the difference friends see accounting errors fall under this sub category which sub category the edpm sub category okay accounting errors thus the answer is accounting errors and with regard to the fiduciary breaches and the product defects these two are in operational risk that is the operational risk events but they fall under the main category okay main category then products and business 
practices category also they fall that that is the main category which category main category means the clients products and business practices category the 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 next option that is the vandalism what is that this is also an operational risk event under the main category of damage to physical assets vandalism is damage to physical assets okay the next question moving back to the next one which one of the following is not one of the pillars under basel 2 which one of the following minimum capital requirement supervisory review and evaluation process these are the in part of the basel 2 pillars so the so the question is which is not okay market discipline market discipline is also there market review market review is there no okay so the answer is d market review is not there so answer is d so the three pillars under basel 2 are the minimum capital requirement supervisory review evaluation process and market discipline not market review the last question of this slide is crar crar friends what is crar first crar is capital to risk weighted assets rwa risk weighted assets ratio okay see crar capital that is c stands for the capital to risk weighted assets risk weighted assets stands for ra risk weighted assets then r ratio risk weighted assets ratio okay the capital compromises of tier 1 capital this is just for your information i am saying you crar is a tier 1 capital plus tier 2 capital after adjustments as per regulatory prescriptions keep please keep in mind the capital compromises of tier 1 capital plus tier 2 capital okay tier 1 plus tier 2 after adjustments as per regulatory prescriptions after adjustments as per regulatory prescriptions 